Hello everyone. Welcome to another session on Big Data Technologies. Today let's learn to create an instance of Microsoft SQL Server on Amazon Web Services. Now there are multiple ways to create SQL Server in AWS world. Let's uh, quickly talk about a couple of them. The first one is uh, you can create a EC2 instance and install SQL Server in it and uh, apply your own license on that and also manage all the patches that are released by SQL Server or Microsoft uh, on your own. Next one is Amazon Machine Image, which is essentially a VM with uh, operating system and a bunch of prepackaged applications, including SQL Server. In this case, you don't need to manage the license or applying patches. They are all included as part of the package. And the one we are going to explore today is RDS or Relational Data Service. In this case, you do not manage the host operating system licensing or the patches that are that need to be deployed onto the SQL Server, but solely focus on implementation and using your database. Let's get started by spinning up an instance of SQL Server RDS. I'll log into my AWS account, sign in, and to reach to RDS, I have various options. You can click on RDS here or go under database. You have RDS here, or, can, or I can type RDS, or I also have a shortcut created here. Click on RDS, scroll down, and click on launch a DB instance since we want to create a brand new one. Now these are my options. You can create any of these RDBMS. I'll go for SQL Server. And again, here I have different versions. Uh, I don't want enterprise or web version. I'll go for SQL Server Express, which is also part of free tier eligible. Let's configure our instance. The first option we have is licensing model. Now this option makes more sense if you have chosen a enterprise version, but since ours is a free tier SQL Server Express, this license is included and we don't need to choose or change anything. Next one is database engine version. Do you want the latest 2016 SQL Server or any of the previous versions? You have a bunch of them that you can choose from. Database instance class whether you want one CPU with one GB RAM, two GB RAM, or you have a couple of choices here. I'll go for a micro, T2 micro, and you have to choose the time zone. Mine is Eastern Standard Time. And storage type, I'll go for SSD, and I'll leave the allocated storage of 20 GB space. Next one is database instance. So this is going to be used as part of your connection string. I'm going to name it Big Data Technologies. My username is Sanjay and a super secret password. Click next. Okay, the ID has to be shorter. So let's try just Big Data Tech Network. Next one is network and security related settings. If you're interested to set up a virtual private cloud in which this instance will be accessible, then you can go ahead and uh, configure and create a new VPC and set it up. In my case, I'll leave it to default. If you're interested to set up a range of IP addresses and make this instance available only to that range of IP addresses, which can also be a part of uh, your VPC. You can set it up here, but in my case, I'm again going to leave this as default. Do you want this to be publicly accessible or only to yourself? I will let it be publicly accessible. You can also mention in which availability zone your DB instance should be created. And finally, we VPC security groups, I'll let it create a brand new one. If you want Active Directory settings to be applied onto this database so that users don't have to enter their username and password, you can set it up by clicking on this Create New Directory and it will 
let you configure your ADS related settings. In my case, I don't want any of those. I'll enter the username and password and I'll go for SQL Server authentication. If you want to change the database port, you can change that, but I'll leave it at default. You can also set up a couple of other things like encryption. I will not touch them. And then you have backup retention period of every week. I would want it to be default seven days, that is once a week. And if you want, you can also change uh, the backup window and mention what time you want it to do the backup, maybe Sunday night or something like that. But in my case, I'm going to leave it as no preference so that server chooses the backup time. If you want AWS to apply the patches to SQL Server, automatically choose this as yes. And you can also choose the maintenance window. In my case, I leave it as is, no preference. And I launch the database instance. And my instance is being created. And you can go and see all the instances I have. So yeah, it's still being created. We'll have to wait for a couple of minutes for it to be ready. Now our database is ready. Let's make use of it. So click on the details. You can monitor the health of your database with this tab. And in the next one, you have all configuration related details. We'll come back to this in a minute. And on the last one, you have the replication related details. In our case, we didn't have any kind of replication implemented, so we don't see any details here. So we go back to the second tab and we will need this connection details or the endpoint. I copy this endpoint and we will make use of this in SQL Server Management Studio. Launch SSMS. And then here we paste that endpoint that we copied. And my username is Sanjay and super secret password. Okay, so we got connected to our, our SQL Server RDS. Let's create a new database. Under databases, I'll say new database. Enter database name as accounts. And our database is ready. Let's uh, create a table under this. Okay, instead of uh, manually creating it, I'll run a script to create the table. So I click on new query and paste the script I have for creating the table and I execute the query and our table is created. So we should be able to see it here. Yep, we see the sales table. All right, so we successfully created our first table in the SQL Server RDS hosted on AWS. With this, I would like to wrap up this session. We created a SQL Server RDS instance and then we got connected to that and also created a sample table on that. In the future sessions, we will store some data in, into this table. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this video. Thank you.